before we jump into tech tomfoolery, we would like to take a moment to thank this week's sponsor. Hello Fresh is a farm to box and couch to kitchen meal delivery service which aims to make cooking more fun. So you can focus on the whole experience, not just that finished plate you're going to share on Facebook through the camera on your phone. Each week Hello Fresh delivers delicious new recipes with step-by-step -step cooking instructions broken down into 6 easy to follow steps. Each meal designed to take around 30 minutes to prepare even for the kitchen novices or experienced cooks who might be short on time. You see, you've got the uh, the little card right here, and you can see all of the, the steps are well laid out, broken into six easy-to-follow steps. Uh, sourcing the freshest ingredients measured to the exact quantities needed helps reduce food waste. And I have to throw a personal shout-out uh, because the packaging for HelloFresh is absolutely fantastic. Instead of just a big, gnarly bag full of individual ingredients all just sort of lumped in there, every recipe you get with the service is sort of packaged in its own container so you know exactly what you're supposed to use. And it really takes, uh, it really helps streamline the amount of prep needed for each meal. Less than $10 per serving, you can select between the classic plan, vegetarian options, and a family box if you need to feed more people. This week on the menu is a chicken parmigiana salad, a juicy Lucy burger with a molten cheese core, and a zesty crusted catfish served over cilantro jasmine in rice. HelloFresh employs two full-time dietitians to ensure each meal is nutritionally balanced, now offering light spring meals, and they've just added and they've just introduced back breakfast options to get your day started right with the most important meal of the day. Delicious ingredients you'll love to eat, simple recipes you'll love to cook. HelloFresh has a special offer for listeners of the Pocket Now Weekly. Get $30 off your first week of deliveries when you use the promo code POCKETNOW30. Again, $30 off your first week when you sign up at HelloFresh.com with the promo code POCKETNOW30. And we thank them for supporting the Pocket Now Weekly. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, the guest for this week's podcast. Uh, this is a story that is basically shaped almost my entire adult life. And I say that without hyperbole. Uh, Mr. Philippe Kahn is responsible for a technology that we probably all take for granted today. But we're celebrating a very important anniversary where five days and 20 years ago, he assembled all of the pieces to share a photo from a digital camera over through a computer and over his Motorola StarTac cell phone. Uh, this is an incredible story as the photo that he shared was of the birth of his daughter. So all of these pieces came together in an incredible way. His wife Sonia in the hospital as he is tinkering with this equipment to, to make it all happen in this moment and it creates the foundation of every social networking service, every cloud service, every data service that we use now, all, all came from this momentous event in technology history and momentous event in his own life. So without further ado, let's jump right into this conversation as uh, Mr. Khan is a phenomenal storyteller. He's off and running like a shot as we started this podcast. Uh, I, I present to you our conversation with Philippe Khan. So to okay. answer that question, uh, you know, you can ask her herself, but uh, <laughs> she's, she's running around here, but she, um, she, um, she, she, she's a full participant and, uh, you know, we're, we're partners really, uh, both in life and in business and, and, and well, in technology really, but, um, you know, she had a bit on during those 24 hours, but, uh, you know, the, the, the camera phone did come, didn't happen in 24 hours. That's kind of a year before that building the all the, the server and the software infrastructure and mm -hmm. everything that's needed to create this instant picture share, which, right. you know, you need to be able to store a picture to send notifications. And this is 1997, the, <laughs> the web was young. There were no easy tools, you know, you didn't right. have a you know, the Apache, uh, you didn't have, uh, uh, a, a lot of the tools that you, you have now. And so, uh, you know, I worked on it for a year and then after we, we made it work, um, 
at the maternity, um, you know, it take it took quite a bit of time to integrate the whole thing into, right. uh, you know, uh, a module that could be embedded in a phone or something like that, so that people could see you know, what you could really do once this thing was integrated in a phone. The combination of the what people call the camera phone, but you know, I, I, and the server infrastructure, but it's really a software right. job. There are plenty of people who had put, you know, uh, videos and photos and phones. The problem is the pictures and everything stayed there. No one thought about it. Well, I've gotten else. into a, a few sort of uh, spirited conversations, debates about that, because, uh, you know, it, I, I really feel that J phone, the SH04, was the very first true camera phone in that those Absolutely. things were actually combined. And uh, a lot of people have come. I, I actually talk about JPhone in my book. I have a book about smartphone photography. And uh, I've gotten a lot of replies like, well, it wasn't the first phone to have a camera on it. And they're like, well, I could no, duct tape a camera to any phone. That's right. <laughs> but I can't do anything with it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, I call it the bulldo crane symbol. I said, you know, anyone can take a bulldozer and a crane, put them together, and, and invent <laughs> the bulldo crane. The problem is, what do you do with a bulldo crane? Exactly. And, and people weren't weren't doing anything uh, anything with it, and that is exactly the point. J phone is not the camera phone; is as much the 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 the, the Shaw mail infrastructure that we work mm -hmm. with, the transcoding, and anything that we work with them on. And it was the same thing with Sprint. You know, we we created a phone with Casio. We help them integrate the stuff and build some firmware. But the real thing is the ability to instantly share pictures with thousands of people without sending thousands of pictures, which is the way in which Facebook and all these things, Instagram and all that work today. And that's exactly the point. JPhone was the first that where you, and you know, I'm all over the place, but <laughs> let me let me say the argument that I think sticks with everyone. I said, listen, all these people who claim that they, they, they all these claims about, about camera phone, it's pretty funny. It's like every one of these guys who make claims, and I met pretty much all of them. I said, so where are the pictures you took? Right, exactly. And the answer is, <laughs> oh, we don't have those. I said, well, what was the point? Well, we left them on the phone. It's at the lab. It never got a release. <laughs> and I'm going, the point is to point, shoot, and share instantly. It's the polarity of the 21st century. So right. that's exactly the point, is that there were no pictures. They, they didn't even use it for their own pictures of their own kids. It's right. pretty funny. You, now, you'd if, think if, they would. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to backtrack really, really quickly here. Um, just, just for our, our audience, and especially why I was so excited to have you on the podcast, is that this is a really important anniversary. That we're five days removed now, at the time that we're recording this, from the 20th anniversary of this process that you developed. This, this ability to, to instantly send uh, over a wireless communication system a photo that other people could interact with. And, and I wanted to just to kind of start even before the, uh, the birth of your daughter, which was one of the most amazing, I think, occurrences to coincide with the birth of the camera phone, um, because you were creating this infrastructure for years before all of these pieces really came together for the first practical demonstration. Was it always with the focus of photography or was this sort of uh, like you were just looking at ways that you could create sort of a prototype for what we would now consider cloud storage in the modern era? No, I, I wasn't looking at cloud. This was 1997. I started in 1996. Then the web was like <laughs> really young and three right. years old. And and I was focused on images. I, I really, um, Sonia is, um, was, uh, was one of the first people at that time to do uh, digital uh, photography manipulation on, 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 on computers, which was not something that a lot of people did. And uh, we were looking at how do we share these things instantly. And we realized at the time, it's not just wirelessly, it's like in general, the, the bandwidth, even at the time, you know, the, 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 the web, the internet wasn't that, you know, you get caught, is that you right. couldn't, we had a list of 2,000 people around the world that we knew, and if we wanted to share an image, we're not going to send 2,000 pictures at a time. I mean, today <laughs> it's us, but, but the same problem arises today in a different way, but it didn't scale. So we said, we need to build something where, as the owner of this, I can upload this image 
And then I have a list and I can notify these people that if they would like, here's a link back, they can they get an email, just like you get notification, an email notification, just like you get in Facebook. And then you click and you go take a look and take that thing on the server. And everybody can see each other's annotation. People can interact. Like at the time, we used to call that forums or bulletin boards, you know, bulletin mm -hmm. board style um, uh, discussion that you'd have under each image. And it was exactly the thing. But you couldn't really do it and in, in, in a brute force way where it says, okay, I'll send 2,000 images. And even if you did that, how would you have a conversation between the right. people who you, you don't? But... The problem is the same that now because you could argue, okay, there's plenty of, 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 of bandwidth today. You can send 2,000 pictures. But now people end up you know, getting a million views. Right. So, so you're not going to send a million pictures or a million <laughs> videos. You know, right. When people get a million videos, you know, you know, a viral video of some kind of, of a, you know, a, a dog skateboarding or something like that, a French bulldog skateboarding, you know, it gets five million. If you had to send five million copies of this, it wouldn't work. So you put it in one place and each person who wants to see it, they say, you know, a, a, a French skating French pink skating French bulldog, uh, you know, 4.5 average rating. And then you go, oh, I'll click on that. But then you see it and it downloads to you. Right. But it's your bandwidth. It's not my bandwidth as the creator that needs to be almost infinite because millions of people are going to see it. Do you, do you follow what I'm saying? And that's really oh, the... So it was the same thing. At the time, you had very limited bandwidth. And so you had to do it. Today, you have very powerful pipes, but at the same time, the numbers of people who are looking at this stuff is huge. So it's the same scalability challenge, right? Well, and especially for the aspect of, of creating this with the notion of social interaction baked into it, that, that I feel is where we've experienced right. a lot of this exponential growth in that when something goes viral or even just when something's popular among your own family and friends, that the yeah. resource now needs to be stable enough to hold that media, to hold that data. But essentially, the systems that we're using today are all very similar and, and, and tracked almost directly back to your initial experiments, trying to solve this one problem of sharing an image from your computer easily amongst a population. That's exactly right. And, and, and the ability to have people come back, comment, see each other's comment, and interact. It, it, that's the live, the you know, that's the the instant picture mail. What we call is, you know, you're interacting. You know, you you post a picture of your baby, and suddenly, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, uh, what whatever it is they want to say, and and, <laughs> and it should and, always be, oh, what a beautiful baby. <laughs> yeah. No, there's always when, 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 if it's really public, as you know, right. there's a bunch of smart asses out there who will. <laughs> Uh, and that's that's actually an interesting uh, when you get to the to the public side of thing. Mm -hmm. Curation is interesting because you have some really weird people who post weird things. And, oh, definitely. And but that's a diff that's a modern phenomenon, but uh, it's an important one. Well, and and it was also a we had a lot of conversations my wife and I before the birth of our first daughter that uh, we we made a conscious effort not to share her publicly. I think there are maybe five photos that have ever gone live of my daughter in any kind of public forum, but we have gigabytes and gigabytes of photos and videos that we share with our family and friends just in private little photo uh, cloud storage um, shares of, of private folders. So it, we were definitely cognizant of that. And then also we never had our kid photos broadcast in public. Publicly, so we wanted to give her a shot at having some kind of privacy before she has her own Instagram account that she can do whatever she wants with. And, and that's absolutely true, by the way. It's like Sophie, uh, she's 20, like camera phone, right? She's at NYU. She's a student at NYU. And she, um, she, people ask me, oh, can we have a picture of her today? And she goes, no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They've seen my 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 you know like a thirty minute old picture, and I want I want my privacy. I want to be successful in my own right. I had nothing to do with this picture except being born, and this is really exciting. It's really fun to be there. But you know, I want 
I have my own life. This is not my life. I don't want to be the camera phone baby. You know, I, you know, she is, but she right. doesn't want to be. For two, so, and this yeah. is something that she's grown up with. So she has to, she has to know, especially with where society has gone, how important that image is to technology history. Yeah, she, she knows, but no one can tell it's her. <laughs> As she says, it could be anyone. <laughs> and but but it's her <laughs> but right. the, the point is no you if you look at her today and you look at the picture yeah if you look carefully maybe you'll recognize some traits but she, that baby could look like you know a million people on the planet uh you know if you look at that picture but it's our baby it's our baby it's our picture but um she um it's for her i mean the way i interpret it she she's a smart kid and for her she goes well I was born and that was great, but I really, mom did the work, you did the technology, <laughs> and I happened to be there at the right time. And she goes, I, I want to be successful. I mean, that, you, to paraphrase what she goes, she goes, she's really successful. She's a very good writer. She's, she's, she's also very good with technology and stuff. And she says, I know what I want to do. And she's very focused. She's a, she's a very busy kid. And, and, and she, she, uh, she has her own life and, and she does not want people to say, you know, like, for example, on, on her college applications, she did not want to have it. I'm the camera phone baby because she wanted right. to be accepted somewhere on her own merits, not because she was as she happened to be there and mom and dad did the work. So, well, and so for the members of our audience who maybe aren't quite as familiar as my sort of geek fascination with your story, um, maybe walk us through what actually came together because it's it's such a phenomenal story. The uh, there's an amazing dramatization of it on your on your site on uh, what is it Memo Musings from Philippe. Um, it's, uh, it's memo.com actually. Memo.com, but you know. In, in sort of condensing this this story, for years you've been working on a backbone, on a service, a server yeah. side service for sharing a photo, and then your wife goes into labor, and you are MacGyvering the individual pieces to create a hardware chain that can interface with this server side solution right up to the birth of your daughter. Um, exactly. Talk, t take us through that you know part of that day. That that's an amazing joining of events to 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 all arrive at the at one moment in time it's it's a proof that if it wasn't for the last moment nothing would get done um <laughs> so 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 it's um by the way that dramatization was not done by us we discovered it a week ago some film company was doing that as part of an encyclopedia of technology and they contacted us so we had nothing to do with it. It just just took the story and made it happen. We thought it was pretty good. So what happened? So um, I think what's important to understand, as you as you put forward, is that a lot of work had been done before on all the server infrastructure, all the mechanics of of storing uh, remotely a, a picture and notifying a list of people that there is a picture that they might be interested in through an email and with a link back to that server so that they could actually, if they wanted, look at that picture and post a comment or something like that. And so now the question was, uh, at the maternity here in Santa Cruz, um, um, when you're there at the time, you, you didn't have any way to connect or anything. And I know I wanted to take pictures and this was, 1997 was the first year where there was a successful uh, digital camera that took pictures 240 by 320, if I remember correctly. Oh, like quarter, quarter VGA, I remember yeah, those yes, shooters, right. yeah. And that was, uh, that was the Casio QV10 or whatever, Q10 or whatever it was called. And so we had one of those, and for the first time we could have one of those, and it could, it could you know, you had a little cable and it could download to your laptop at the time. You know, like most people, I had a Toshiba Protégé laptop, and I could download pictures. And I, I had built a little control program that was able to actually rapidly download these pictures and push them through the modem port, um, and 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 do that, and and you know, using a wired modem, 
uh, that's how we communicated with the server, right? The problem is there was no 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 RJ11 plug, <laughs> no uh, phone line in the uh, no room. phone line in the that you could <laughs> use, and so I had a StarTAC, and so the StarTAC could act as a wireless 1200 baud wireless modem, um, and it had a little butt plug. But the challenge is always, you know, uh, the protocols I, I'd figure it out, but the, the question is. How do you connect, really? So the control program, what would be in the MCU, was on the laptop. How do you connect the laptop to the StarTag and have the laptop tell the StarTag, the phone, which was an analog phone at the time, it was an analog StarTag. How does the, the, the laptop physically, you know, in hardware, what, what's the wires, uh, uh, talk to, to this phone and tell it to, to use the wireless modem in there to actually send to the server those images sequentially and automatically. It's just like a job control language, you know, the, of the old days. And so you're, and so, you're putting this together in in the waiting room of the hospital. While well, I, actually, it's a it's a maternity. We were very lucky because Sutter at at um, in Santa Cruz is a dedicated maternity with very large rooms actually uh, that have in it a jacuzzi and they have a desk. <laughs> oh, so you were, you were lush. You were just kicking back in the jacuzzi. Uh, absolutely. These pieces we were together. there and she had a, a long, uh, we, we got there early. Uh, they said, oh, you can, you can either go back home or you can stay here because you know, you're, you're probably 12 hours from where we need you. We said, well, just stay because it's very comfortable. And, it's a comfortable place. It's a it's a maternity, not a hospital, and and there's a lot of room. So I had my desk and all that, and I said, yeah, well, we might as well do this and see if I can <laughs> advance the project. You know, it's like there's a piece of the project, and I got stuck, and 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 and, and that's the Sonia's contribution. Really, you know, I said I was like, darn it. I mean. Uh, Really, the issue is the Star Trek, the, 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 the Toshiba laptop, I know how to hack that. But the, the phone is really difficult because, you know, it's like, you know, you, you couldn't take these phones apart, really, and, mm -hmm. and put wires in. And then Sonia's idea was, don't you, don't we have a car kit in the, in the car? Uh, you know, you, so you plug the blah, the blah, and it actually was able to do a hands-free call. And I said, Wow, that's a great idea. Do you mind if I tear it off? Uh, <laughs> she goes, I, even if I mind, you're going to do it anyway. So <laughs> I said, I'll be right back. <laughs> so I took a bunch of tools and the pliers and et cetera and went to the car and basically undid the work of putting in a car kit. I had, I had installed a car kit myself. And so, uh, so you know, the car kit came with a little... Uh, a little enclosure for for speaker then there was a cable and then there was uh, uh also another cable with microphone so you clip the microphone up to the top of the of the uh, of the uh, you know the, the visor or maybe put it on the visor and then you had your little box that was a speaker it was actually worked quite well and 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 it all plugged into this to the back of the phone and i I said, well, at least I have a plug because that's the hardest thing. And with all the wires coming out, now I need to figure out what to do with each wire. And um, that was really the key to making it work then exactly at the, it, and there is that to because I couldn't without the, that back plug and, and, right. and something. In it. So I emptied, you know, got rid of the speaker, got all that and used that actually as a place to to cross wires, to test things and all that. And it worked. And that was really kind of the miracle of the day. It was uh, 18 hours of nonstop work, really. It was like focused, like, you know how you get in a zone, right? right? So I was in the zone and I was just, I'm gonna make this work. And uh, that's, how, that's how it functioned. And um, it was funny because usually you're not, off, so Sonia, Sonia's delivery uh, happened. Uh, uh, let me see what just happened here. Sonia's delivery. Uh, huh. Um, 
you're very small suddenly. Oh, uh, if uh, if you've switched to a different page, it'll probably shrink me. But that's okay. You're you're. you're, you're ah, I got it. I got side. it. You're you're absolutely right. Here we go. I'm not as familiar with Skype. So, so um, <laughs> what happened was uh, was that after about eighteen hours, I said, you know. I think we should do a C-section. And usually in there, so when you're a C-section, you get into the operating room, obviously. Right. And usually you're not allowed to bring anything into an operating room. But we were lucky that uh, the delivery uh, surgeon was a geek who knew me. <laughs> and, Excellent. <laughs> and, you know, he was, he was trying to learn to program, and I had given him tips and stuff like that and help him out. So... So I said, can I bring this? He says, cool, what's this going to do? And he was, and I had a pro problem getting him focused on Sonia and the delivery. <laughs> it was much more, he does that all the time. It was much more interesting <laughs> by, the, by the phone and, oh, wow, wow, what are you doing? Said, yeah, right, 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 baby, show me this camera. <laughs> hey, look at there. I, I said, go, go, go focus on that. It's so funny. And I, Hey, the, the the pump's not working. I say, I go, listen, I'll I'll stop working on this. I'll go fix your pump, but just go go focus on <laughs> you do your job. And it was pretty funny. But it was uh it was uh it was uh I was very lucky to that. And he was he witnessed the whole thing and he um he's funny because he's a very articulate guy, is actually a, a great surgeon, and um he um he um he really was was a piece of it because Anybody else, I think, would have said, "Ah, you can't do that. All these wires and stuff alike." Because I was right. finishing up, but he was—he was great, and he, he's funny when he talks about that. And um, and and so that happened there, and and kind of the it all came together in probably 24 hours, you know, there. Wow. And it was very intense. And Sonia didn't sleep for 24 hours. I didn't either uh, because I was just, you know, I was in the zone. And that's how it all transpired. And I don't think the, the process was as important what happened right away. It's like we had a list, you know, Sonia is from Korea. I'm from Europe. And so we have people all around the world, um, friends and family and people we know. And we had a list of about 2,000 people. Some of them were friends, you know, 200 of them probably, or 250. But, and then, you know, probably 50 family or something like that. Then the rest were people we knew through work or whatever. and. We just took that list, and it was on the server, and we just the system worked as advertised. And suddenly, I started getting you know I was watching these 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 annotations on the server, and and I go, whoa, people go, how did you do that? We could see that the <laughs> pictures that you're sending are happening in real time, and because there was a time date stamp on them, and. And he goes, how do you do this? And the, one of the first person to respond to that was uh, the guy from the Wall Street Journal, Walt Mossberg, who just retired. Yeah. And Walt Mossberg said, how do you do this? And I said, well, if Walt Mossberg uh, asked that, that's pretty good. I He goes, yeah. I want one. That, Is that, that something it's really could... something new if Walt Mossberg doesn't know how to do it. Right. And so, so at that point, we said, wow. You know, this is our next gig. You know, we're going to make this camera phone thing successful. And, you know, we, this is like the Polaroid of the 21st century, and we're going to find a way to make it happen. What he then realized is that there's a big difference between building the concept car and having a car that can drive 100,000 miles on the road and, 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 and getting the roads to accept us. And the question we had is that. Everybody we accept, we, we talked in North America, Kodak in particular, and uh, Polaroid, they were clueless. And I said, I met with the CEOs of these companies. I actually spent two or three days in Rochester, you know, talking to Dan Karp and all his team, and they didn't see it. So the, the, the Kodak, then, as you know, subsequently they went bankrupt. They said, ah, oh, wow. 
no one wants to do this digital thing. Look at this quarter VGA <laughs> pick people. Silver highlight is there forever. We have all these mini labs, one hour labs and everything. No one's doing. And Polaroid were the same way. Their big thing at the time was they were gonna make a printer uh, that was be attached. They would be, the, the next version of the Polaroid was gonna be digital. So it was gonna create, they were gonna take a digital picture and the and instead of being a film, it was gonna be a printer that would be, and I was going, you know, a little mini printer that right. was attached to, to the lens, you know. And we, you know, if, if you didn't have the web, maybe that's a good idea. But I said, so let, let me get this. I, I, I remember telling your CEO, you're going to print this picture like this, right? And you're going to hand it to one, and people are going to look at you. What are you going to use, a photocopy machine? I said, no, we print one more. <laughs> So I said, so what if you want to share this with somebody in Tanzania? And he goes, oh, you send it through the mail. I said, okay. So we have this <laughs> instant picture mail. Right. How would you like that? And it didn't take. Then I went to Motorola and, um, and uh, um, Chris was the, the son of the founder and was running the, was the CEO of the company. And he called his whole staff. I remember being in their boardroom and discussing it and everybody was going, nah, people want better voice. People want better voicemail. People want this, people want that. Uh, there were no texts in the time, you know, text was just right. something that was about to emerge. Um, so they, uh, they didn't see it. And I, I, I insisted on it and all that. They, they were not interested. And that's so, when. So uh, even though you've created this process and you have, you know, this anecdotal experience, I shouldn't even say anecdotal. You've got this test case experience, which is sort of one of the perfect momentous life events that someone would want to share. This okay. story is still being lost on the executive teams of the companies you're pitching this to. Well, I made a mistake. Uh, the mistake that I made is that I'm not a. I'm a I'm a technologist. I'm not a marketing sales guy, and I should have said it, done exactly what you said, which is ah. focus on momentous events. Instead, my demo was to live make it work live with people there, take their pictures and share gotcha. it with their wives or something, like that, and say, okay, well, I, and and then I I think if I had said, okay, it's your baby pictures, it's the wedding pictures, it's the selfie you take on the beach, whatever it is. Uh, it's, you know, it's a, by the way, uh, J-Phone invented the selfie, the practical selfie. If you remember the phone had a Oh, absolutely. It, it, well, and J-Phone actually kicked off with that notion. I, I love the fact that that for an entire generation of phones, we had those little mirrors on the Absolutely. back of our gadgets, yeah. Because we only had one, uh, we only had one uh, uh, imaging sensor, and so that people don't realize that the the the, J, the concept of JPhone was a selfie. I mean, they invented right. the selfie really practically. Practically, so the um, the um, I wasn't successful. I didn't do a good job selling, but I think they were thick as a brick because they all went bankrupt. Motorola went bankrupt, Kodak went bankrupt, yeah. and they couldn't see the paradigm shift. There was a paradigm shift, which was everything is moving to digital. Photography is moving to digital photography. Phones are moving to, phones are gonna become uh, camera phones and smartphones, and they're gonna be mm -hmm. one. And, and you're not gonna be able, you know, Nokia, Nokia tried to relaunch, you know, old phones and stuff like that. People said, I don't want that. I do too much <laughs> with my phone. There was right. a paradigm shift, and, and all these guys have had missed a paradigm shift. And, Every time there's a paradigm shift in technology like that, you have some players who completely lose it that were major players, you know. I mean, when the paradigm shift to personal computers happened, you know, you had people like Deck and Burroughs and Wang and all that, they all went, they all disappeared, right? And people yeah. didn't realize at the time how fast it would happen. I think the same thing's happening in the sleep industry right now is that you know we're 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 seeing you know there's a paradigm shift from bed to smart bed from sleep to to digital quantified sleep and all that and and Definitely. and the traditional the, the 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 traditional mattress companies if they don't harness that paradigm shift we'll we'll see uh, the same challenges as the Kodaks Motorola's and Nokia's but, so
So, so from those from those initial meetings where there was difficulty in getting this idea across, um, there were a few companies that that were kind of leading into this conversation and sort of ready to take. So obviously, JPhone with uh, it was the Sharp SH04. They got on board, and then you also had a partnership with Sprint. Um, so that on. happened that, later. So, so how that happened was a little. So I spent, you know, I don't know, three, four months in Japan, pretty much. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we, we basically spent time in Japan. And, 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 and so we created this business and it was great. We did all the transcoding for them and all that. And, you know, I first went to Docomo and, DC, and TT Docomo, which was the, the, the big dominating uh, wireless right. uh, company in, in, in Japan. And they were also thick as a bruise. Well, you know, they were <laughs> doing the Japanese, you know, oh, right. yeah, yeah, we no, no. And you know, you didn't get a response and you spent a lot of time. So until we found Jay's phone and 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 there were nobody and they took it on and they were very successful, as you know. So in 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 uh, early two thousand, so as you know, J Phone launched in late 1999, if I remember, and in early to you know a few months later, this writer from um, Wired, uh, Bob Parks, uh, saw the J Phone Sharp thing and realized that of our involvement, and so says, "I want to write a story." And so he wrote the story, and I think it's the October 2000 issue or something I got of Wired, which this was supposed to be, it, the title of the story was The Big Picture, and the, basically the idea was the paradigm shit. And he, um, all this was, was, was great and, and was happening. And they, they even came to shot the cover picture and all that. And then this is the issue where Napster died, <laughs> where, where Napster got, Unplugged, right? Right. So this is that famous issue where I got a call from the editors of Wired and say, we're really sorry we disrupted you. <laughs> we're still going to run your story in there, but, but the, cover the cover is going to be a a uh, a uh, a black cover, funeral right. style cover for the funeral of Napster because you know that's <laughs> so that's a famous that that's famous issue and so they ran that and. But they ran our story, which was, you know, a, a big story. Bob Parks is a wrote a long story and very descriptive, and he's still around. And people ask him, and he says, "Well, it's amazing because when we were together, we described to him what was going to happen with citizen journalism, with telemedicine, with all that." And said, "And all happened." And he was very skeptical at the time, but he wrote a great story. And a couple of guys at Sprint in Overland Park, you know, uh, Kansas. Um, read the story that was a, uh, a guy called Pierre Barbeau and a guy called um, Danny Bauman, if I remember. And Pierre and Danny wrote that. And I got a call from Pierre saying, <laughs> I'm with Sprint, um, where, you know, they were the small carrier compared to AT&T, Verizon at the time. And I want to do what what, what J-Phone did in, in Japan and in the U.S. I said, well, that's great because we can't convince AT&T or Verizon to do it right now. And so we went to Casio, but mm -hmm. an office here, and said, would you be interested? They were very eager because they had lost the uh, J-Phone opportunity. It was sharp, right, initially. Right. And so that's how we launched in the U.S. with Sprint, Casio, together. We built a whole infrastructure for Sprint. Everything we not only built it, but we ran it for them. So it was software wow. as a service, really. It was a platform as a service and software as a service, and um, and they were very successful. That put Sprint for the next five years milked that like crazy. They were the <laughs> right. only people in the U.S. who really that. have have it working. And and you know, AT and T and Verizon had to come to 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 that firehouse at one point but it took him several years and so all those years print was very successful so with with that now we finally got a foothold in the united states people are starting to understand this concept and from my 
from my rememberings that this this was a field that exploded rather quickly. I mean, obviously, there were a number of those conversations that, well, you're trading expediency for quality. Obviously, you, if you want quality, you've got to go to a standalone camera. But these phone things, they're kind of fun to play with. Up to this point now where we find that phone cameras have largely eclipsed standalone camera sales, you know, like people can leave their their proper camera at home most days because their phone cameras are able to 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 carry the weight, to carry the load, and are in many cases just as good or if not better than some of the consumer point and shoot cameras. What are some of your feelings? You look at out you look at this landscape and you see the 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 path that you've created for people to create content and to distribute content. What does that feel like? I mean, looking 20 years back to now, this is such an amazing story and it's exploded so quickly that this was all sort of directly from your your handiwork. Yeah, and and you know, the beauty of the camera phone is that it's always in your pocket or in your handbag or in your hand. And so you always have it with you. And that is, you know, the concept was was really that one is that instantly share what you experience. And so it led, you know, when you look at it, what it led to, uh, like citizen journalism, you know, you, mm -hmm. you know, I think it saved the lives of people in many ways, uh, uh, and 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 change the political landscape in a lot of places because you can't hide. There's always someone with a camera <laughs> phone who's filming. Multiple people with phones. Or multiple. Usually, yeah. And, and I say it happened this way. Oh no no no! Look at the video, uh, the camera phone <laughs> video. And it's pretty funny. And and and, uh, and 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 so that's a perfect example. Another one is, is you know, if you go, if you get out of the U.S. where, where and you go, say, to Africa or, a, you know, a so-called third world country, you find people who don't have a house, a home, who don't have a laptop, who don't have anything. Right. But they have a, a camera phone, a smartphone with a camera, and they now have memories. And now right. those memories are, char are stored on Facebook, whatever they do it, and they share it and they notify and they do all that stuff. And that's something they have before they have a home, they have they have a car, before they have any, you know, they even have a bed, a lot of these people, and they have public charging stations. And um, so I, I really, that's the, the social impact and the impact that something has like that, to me is, is more important than the size of the industry. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. there's plenty of people who build, you know, incredible, you know, large businesses and they're very successful and all that, and that good for them. But, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, it's great. Uh, but my focus is more like, you know, you spend time on this planet, you try to make Mrs. and Mr. everyone's life a little better, N not just claim that, say, I made a lot of money, but, you know, Windows is better or something. Well, it's not. <laughs> but, but you look, you, look, you, you know, you, 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 you just look at, uh, you, 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 you look at, you know, what can you, what have you done really directly with technology that has had an impact? I think that's, that's really an important piece of it. And, and, you know, that's the power of the people who made the ARPANET that turned into the internet, yeah. that turned into the, uh, into, into the, the web and that turned, you know, into, into the ability for, for Mrs. and Mr. Everyone to do things that they couldn't do before. And I think that that's a, to me, that's the important piece of it is, is yeah, it's exciting. And uh, it's fantastic when you see the, 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 the camera you get on a, right. on a latest Samsung or something I like got, you go, wow, this is better than, you know, <laughs> you, you'll never use that, 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 all the, all that functionality is, it's pretty amazing, yeah. And you know, now there's extensions, even you know, with the good drones now are sending yeah. directly to your, to your phone that stuff, which is streamed directly, and you know, and now suddenly you could see it from space. You know, I mean, it's it, it's really uh, the personal communicator and everyone connected with everyone at all times instantly. Well, and and your story again, and this is the creation of this is something that hit very 
close to home personally is I, I was finishing my photography book while my wife was in the hospital before oh. we were going to have our daughter. And I've got my DSLR there. I've got lenses. I've got, I mean, I'm prepped. I'm ready for my daughter to arrive. And when the moment actually came that I got to see my daughter for the very first time, my phone was the right tool. It wasn't that it was a compromise in quality. It wasn't that it was just easier to email from my phone once the photo was there. It was, this was more discreet. The optics were plenty good enough for me to capture the moment. And it kept me closer to my daughter, holding her for the very first time yeah. than if I had taken the time to break out my SLR and pop on a really fancy macro lens and, and have this giant piece of machinery in between me and her in that moment. And, you know, it, when I when I read your story and when I, I especially after watching the dramatization, uh, that video is is really charming. Um, it's just something that that personally has affected my family. And it's something that I, I think a lot of people can can will resonate with a lot of people. A lot of people can can sort of express those moments. I had this or or maybe it was something dangerous or maybe it was something um, momentous or maybe it was something mundane like a. Uh, you know, a, a cop says I was parked in this wrong position. And so I took a photo of where my car was and I showed the judge yeah, something exactly. silly. that that now we've got this ubiquitous control. This is democratized our ability to tell a story or to share a moment or to um, join a conversation. Again, something that we've not always had had to, had in the past. Exactly. I agree with that 100 percent. I actually, you know, the funny thing is we live in Santa Cruz. And there's a lighthouse. We live very, uh, at the harbor, very close to the lighthouse. And so a lot of times we walk our dogs, whatever. And there's people at lighthouse is nice at sunset and all that nice white lighthouse. So there's always people who say, hey, can you take a picture of us? Uh, <laughs> like if they're asking you, they don't they don't know. Just <laughs> what an amazing. It's, it's, it's great. It, <laughs> It's it's a great experience because I, we go, you know, that's exactly right. Now they have them, they share it instantly, and you could right. see them do that. And and says, how would they do that in any other way? And they had the camera there; they probably wouldn't have carried a camera. And uh, it, it's it's reshaped uh, a lot of the industry, the photography industry. But you know that better than I do. And and there was a huge paradigm shift for the photography industry. And some of them made Definitely. it, and some of them didn't make it as well. So I, I want to circle back to something else because I know you've been keeping busy. You've been keeping busy since the invention of, you know, sort of photo sharing online 20 years ago. And you mentioned briefly you were you were talking about sleep and in reading through some of the uh, the articles on memo.com. This is something that I think you've taken up as your next cause or your next uh, what, what what's going to interest you in the next phase of your career. And it's something where I, I kind of feel the technological barrier um, between services and data and then human biology is probably going to be the next battleground or is probably going to be the next exciting consumer area. We see little hints of it with things like fitness trackers, uh, you know, getting your, mm. I get my heart rate, you know, 24 hours a day uh, when I wear my watch kind of a thing. And that's, that's really great. But I don't think we fully explored all of the opportunities for improving the quality of life, not just bombarding physiology with more services and more apps and more data. I agree with that. And so sleep is a very interesting thing. It's, um, we spend a th roughly a third of our lives in our bedroom sleeping or supposedly sleeping eight hours a day. It's a third of our lives, uh, six and a half billion people. Uh, it's a lot of time. <laughs> and uh, we sleep, we, we, we live in a sleep deprived society. Mm -hmm. You know, every time I make a speech in a big, uh, you know, hotel or something, I have some convention or conference or something. I always ask people, uh, who slept too much last night? And there's always a smart, <laughs> there's always a smart ass. Oh, I slept too much. Okay. Most people, <laughs> if I ask people who would have wished they could have slept a little more and they all say, Everybody raises their hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you fresh from a trip that I got stuck in Shanghai, and I'm still on the wrong time zone <laughs> in my brain. So, I'm I'm way off my sleep cycle right now. So 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 you you got it. So everybody's sleep deprived in some way. Um, 
you know, you see people falling asleep at business meetings and other, I mean, we're all sleep deprived and we have work, we have kids, we have a ser- you know, uh, a Game of Thrones to watch, we have uh, video games to play, we have whatever it is that we do. Uh, I mean, you know, Facebook, uh, actually Facebook never sleeps, that's a problem. And, um, and so, People have a certain, the way we look at it, a certain sleep budget. You know, you you basically have six, eight hours a, a day that you, you, you basically know that you're going to sleep. The problem is, you, you know, you, you, you get all these sleep doctors who tell people, oh, you should sleep more. So you sleep, you actually physically sleep six hours, you should sleep eight. <laughs> that doesn't work. Right. You, you, we're busy. We're looking at Facebook. We're doing playing a video game, whatever it is. So it doesn't work. So what can work is people have a certain sleep budget and look at sleep just like you look at you know a five thousand meter run. Is look you can look at your time and you try to improve your performance. So my whole focus has been to understand sleep and try mm-hmm. to give people the tools or build them over time that help improve your sleep efficiency performance so that in the same amount of time, if I can improve your sleep efficiency by 20% and you sleep six hours, I just gave you over an hour more of sleep without changing any of your schedule. So you should be happy and I should be happy. And that's really what we're we're looking at. And so we've built non-invasive monitoring systems that get embedded under mattresses where you don't mm-hmm. see them, you don't have to wear anything, you don't have to charge anything, oh, wow. that are able to collect that information, that respiration rate, heart rate, all that thing, to give uh, our AI by can, that's cloud-based AI by can, the information it needs to actually help you with uh, personalized tips and, and, and coaching to help you be more successful in your sleep, improve over time the quality of your sleep, and 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 if you have better sleep and you you will perform better in everything you do during the day, whether it's work, whether it's relationships, uh, whether it's sports, and so mm-hmm. that's what we look at. And so, is is this a is this a, a consumer facing business yet, or is this still in in a sort of a prototyping or testing phase, or are there products that people can engage with now for that kind of data? Uh, so um, my what I do is always uh, a uh, B2B. Uh, my customers are people like Nike, like Simmons Betting, like Sura ah, okay. Betting, and all that. I build technology for these guys. I don't Hey, I'm not a marketeer and a sales guy. I'm, I, I want to stay away from that because it, it, it's really difficult. And once you start doing that, then you're not really building technology. It's very difficult. Right. You're just, you're just becoming so I'd rather build technology to, for, for people and, and let them go sell it. So, yes. So our, our partners at, um, at uh, Simmons Heard at Beauty Rest have actually just released the first version of what they call a sleep tracker monitor. And uh, it's a, they sell it through their betting channels, which are, you know, companies like Jordan's and all these. Oh, okay. Yeah, because that's where they sell their mattresses. These are, you know, companies right. that sell millions of mattresses a year. And they actually just put it on Amazon. But, uh, and so they, you know, it's a, basically it's a $150 solution that, that, you know, you just put a plug a processor into the wall, uh, put two sensors under your mattress, and then the whole AI-based cloud that, that that we run does the work. And then you get um, every day a report on your sleep and tips and personalized tips and and coaching that help you improve your sleep. And that's our version one. And that's how you know it's uh, it, it's really a interesting, challenging problem. Uh, similar mm-hmm. challenges because. If you have, we don't have them yet. We have, you know, maybe a hundred thousand households using the system, but just a hundred thousand beds, homes during the night, smart home, uh, uh, streaming, you know, uh, eight hours worth of heart rate and all that all night. Yeah, it's a Uh, lot of data. There's a lot of data, so we had to solve very difficult, and that that data had to has to fit into. 
uh, machine learning and AI engine that allow us to, 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 to analyze in real time how you're sleeping and then uh, very rapidly notify you as to how you perform against yourself versus you know how, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the same day of the week last week or versus people like you, which is you know looking at uh, uh, demographics of people, for example, your age group, your weight group, right. and your fitness level, and see how you perform. And 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 why would it be that you wouldn't perform as well in your sleep? And so uh, it's really fascinating. I have a, a fantastic team of scientists and data scientists and mathematicians and all that. And it's uh, it's 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 a really exciting space. And and has Sonia continued to work with you on these projects? Like after after picture picture phones and camera phones, is is this something she's still involved with, or was she more of a digital artist? No, she she she's a hundred percent involved. We 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 do this together. I don't think uh, we're we actually we work too well together. She she is a digital artist and a pianist and a cello player, but she's she's a she she's also a very good operational person and a very good mm. strategic thinker and she's much more organized operationally than i am <laughs> and so so she I, keeps... I picked my wife very similarly in sound. <laughs> how do you know she maybe she picked you <laughs> I, I i feel that's probably a more accurate way of putting it yes <laughs> so so it's uh so we have a. Uh, we have a, a, a very, um, we work well together. You know, we, we know the, our boundaries and all that. And we don't sit in the same office all day long that we don't do. But we, uh, we work together uh, well. And she's, she's 100% part of, 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 this, of, of this company, Full Power. And our customers are people like Nike, like Simmons, mm-hmm. Serta, Beautyrest, and people like that. And so... Uh, it's it's an exciting uh, company, very AI based, cloud based AI. Because really, the secret is in 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 getting those massive streams of data, and what you do with it, and how you interact with right. it, and how you build artificial intelligence that actually can deal with these things and write in 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 real time. Because well, and communicate of, that to the customer too. It's that's it's, right. I, you know, you have a mountain of data, even just for some of like my fitness tracking. If it's two charts and graphy, I might really not know what my goal is moving forward. It, sometimes it does need to be sort of broken down and spelled out to me in a very simple way. Exactly. It, it's like it, it's it's um, to 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 understand yourself first. You want to quantify yourself, but quantifying is not good enough it's 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 you know it's the infographics type of right. you know how am i doing against myself how am i doing against people just like me and that's true for sleep but it's also true for how many steps you're you know, how active oh. you are etc so that's it's a, it's a quantified self right absolutely Oh, Mr. Khan, I can't thank you enough for joining us uh, on this on this show, uh, joining us tonight. It, it was something that was very important for me to have this conversation with you, just how much a part of my life this technology has become. And especially as I was growing up, you know, we're talking the late 90s. I was just getting out of high school, watching these systems evolve and watching this technology explode and and going from the early days of where I was carrying around Palm Pilots and Windows Mobile pocket PCs and being made fun of to seeing just how pervasive, you know, like I felt pretty good. I was ahead of the curve on some of that stuff. Um, but to have you on and to, to be able to share this story that 20 years ago, we couldn't communicate this idea or why people would care about it. And now we live in a world where we can't live without it is amazing. And so, one, I just want to thank you personally <laughs> for being well, a part of shaping welcome. this landscape. Um, but then also thank you for joining us uh, to have this chat. And uh, thanks for having us again. You know, uh, uh, communicating is a, is a key part of, of, of building technology. And you're obviously a great communicator. So thank you for doing that. But, absolutely my pleasure. <laughs> Bye-bye now.